Good morning. Uh, welcome to the West Ham Voice. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button and the like button and the bell notification to let you know when I'm next on. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, you just get to he hear me ramble on about West Ham United and all things like that. Now, I know we've got uh, Premier League games to be um, focusing on, but I can't help talk a little bit about um, the uh, Europa League and uh, the last eight. Uh, you know, we've made it into the last eight. We now know who our opposition is going to be. And we also know uh, who else we're going to be facing uh, should we get through the last eight against Leverkusen. Uh, we'll uh, then go to Italy and face either Roma or AC Milan. So here are the last eight uh, that have made it through. Uh, AC Milan get to play Roma. Bayer Leverkusen against us, West Ham United. Liverpool against Atalanta. No, apparently it wasn't fixed. And uh, Benfica against Marseille. Now, if West Ham get through, as I've just mentioned, we will then be playing uh, either AC Milan or Roma. And then the two, and then the teams below, if Liverpool or Atalanta get through, they will then face Benfica or Marseille in the semi-finals. So all to look forward to. Now, if we do get to the final, um, we'll be drawn as the away team again. So we won't get to wear our colours, unfortunately. Uh, well, we may not. It depends on uh, who we who we face in the final. Long way there to go there first uh, be before even thinking about the final. But uh, we'll be the, the away team if we get to Dublin. <clears throat> so for us, it's back to Germany yet again. It seems to uh, it seems as if we're having a bit of a, a love affair with uh, the German teams at the moment. And we face Bayer Leverkusen on the 11th of April uh, away. Uh, the, our, our first game is the away leg. Now, you don't need to tell me how formidable Bayer Leverkusen have been this season. Their stats do speak for themselves. Uh, in the league, after 25 games, they have won their top of the league. Uh, by 10 clear points uh, be, uh, in front of Bayern Munich. Uh, they've won 21 games, drawn four, without a defeat in the German Bundesliga. They are the second highest goal-scoring team with 63 goals, and they've conceded just 16. This is as of uh, Saturday. Uh, that's a ratio of two and a half goals scored per game and under a goal conceded per game. It's quite formidable indeed, uh, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, they are doing exceptionally well under Z Xabi Alonso this season. The Europa League has been almost as impressive, but many would argue that uh, they've yet to really be tested uh, in this competition so far this season. In the group stages, they won all six of their games against Gothenburg, Mould and uh, Karabag scoring 19 goals in the process and conceding just three. But like West Ham United, in the round of 16, they were also drawn against a team that they'd, also, uh, that they'd already played against in the group stages. And that, of course, was the Azerbaijani team, Karabag. This time, they didn't have it all their own way. Uh, in the first leg of the game, um, they had to uh, make do with a 2-2 draw uh, when they went away to Azerbaijan, uh, uh, away to Karabakh, and it took a late injury time equaliser from once West Ham link striker Patrick Sheik uh, to get the draw. And with the second leg at Leverkusen, many thought it would be a bit of a foregone conclusion that the German team would get through this relatively with ease. But again, it was not cut and dried. It wasn't uh, so. It wasn't as so. Karabag scored on the 58th minute to take a 3-2 lead on aggregate. On the 67th minute, Karabag scored again to make it 2-0, uh, which, which was five minutes after they had a player sent off. So basically, even though um, uh, Karabag went 2-0 up with a man down, Leverkusen still had it all to do. They managed to salvage a goal on the 72nd minute uh, through Jeremy Frimpong. But again, it was deep, deep into injury time that uh, um, Leverkusen managed to uh, get back into the game. Uh, on the 93rd minute, Patrick Sheik again got uh, the equaliser and they got the winner on the 97th minute of the game. So despite Leverkusen's great run in the Bundesliga, I think 
you could you could see that quite possibly um, they can be got at in the Europa League. For Carabag to uh, go two goals up uh, in in the return leg at Bayer Leverkusen um, says a lot for how Carabag played that game. And I think um, you know I think West Ham United are going to be Leverkusen's big test. Um, I'm not uh, putting down Carabag. I think they did immensely well. And the fact that they almost got through at the expense of Leverkusen speaks volumes about that team itself. But I think West Ham United are going to be the first formidable team that uh, Leverkusen are going to face in this um, in this competition. But let's be honest, I think Leverkusen are going to be the first big test we face as well. I mean, you know, in the group stages that, uh, for West Ham, you know, we weren't doing that well in some of the games. We fell behind back at Topola before we came to beat them 3-1. Uh, we didn't do well against Olympiacos away where we lost the game. Uh, we got beat over there. Uh, and uh, we didn't really show an awful lot in some of the other games that we played as well. We looked a little bit lacklustre at times. Um, but then, of course, in the round of 16, when we faced Freiburg uh, again, uh, we lost again to them in, in the first leg. But as we all know, in the uh, in the game against them at home uh, last Thursday, we really did show our class by beating them convincingly 5-0. So herein lies um, one big advantage for West Ham United because in the first round of the quarterfinals, we're away from home. So that means, um, you know, we're going to... Uh, I don't know what David Moyes is likely to do. Many will speculate that he's probably going to go out there and do the low block, try and come away with a draw or something like that. I hope not, because if we go out uh, Leverkusen, there's a possibility that we're going to be able to get something off uh, um, off them. Um, because once, if we do get past Leverkusen, then we will be facing an Italian team in the next leg, Roma or Milan. So uh, there's all to play for. It's not beyond the realms of impossibility for us to be able to go out to uh, Germany and get a decent result and then play them at home. This is the reverse of what happened two years ago. We had the same the same thing um, uh, two years ago in the, uh, against Seville when we were uh, 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 away from home, when we were losing, and then we beat them at home uh, in that game, uh, which was similar to the Freiburg game. But uh, the reverse was with Leon, where... We played our first game at home and then we had to go and beat them out uh, in Lyon. This time round, we've got the advantage where we're going to be playing Leverkusen away uh, and we're going to be facing them at home in the second leg. Now, we're going to have to do all this without Edson Alvarez, who's picked up his third yellow card uh, in this tournament, which means he misses the first um, leg away to Leverkusen. What David Moyes will do uh, to try and um, he's been immense for us, hasn't he? You know, and David Moyes is going to have to try and find a way to play without him. Now, I'm guessing it's likely to be Calvin Phillips. After all, Phillips has been brought in uh, as another defensive minded midfielder. Uh, so I would imagine possibly Moyes might uh, want to go with Phillips. But I guess we'll have to see what happens. But I think we've got a chance. You know, why not? If Karabag can get uh, a number of goals against Bayer Leverkusen, then why what why not West Ham? If we go out and try and uh, you know, if we go out and try and do the low block, it's possible that we may suffer for it. If we try try and go out there and give them a game, both home and away, who knows what could happen? Of course, there's a subplot to all of this, isn't there? Because uh, it all relates to Tim Steiden. Um, now, what he's building at West Ham United. Will that overcome what he's built at, or what he helped to build at Bayer Leverkusen? Um, it's going to be interesting uh, because uh, it's looking at uh, what Steiden's legacy was to what Steiden is uh, currently building with his project at West Ham now. Um, have we got the sort of players that can stand up to Leverkusen? Why not? You know, the likes of uh, Mohamed Kudush, Lucas Paqueta, uh, Jared Bowen, even Antonio, what are they going to do with someone like uh, Mikel Antonio, who's going to try and steamroller their defence? It's going to be interesting. I'm not looking at what happened in pre-season uh, when we played Leverkusen for the first time and we got beat by them 4-0. Uh, 
that was another time, a different kind of uh, setup, different scenario, preseason, etc. Uh, there's a lot more at stake this time round uh, with um, uh, by Levick uh, with uh, against Leverkusen, uh, and I think uh, West Ham United are beginning to find their form just at the right time. All right, the the beginning of the calendar year wasn't great, but certainly um, what we've done over the past few games has certainly shown that we've got a lot more in our locker. It's going to be an intriguing tie. It's going to be one of those ties where, you know, anything could happen. If we come back from Germany with a half-decent result, who knows what could happen under the lights at West Ham. We've had the atmospheres before, and why not against Leverkusen? It's going to be a big, big game. And of course, like I said, uh, it's going to be intriguing to see if we do get through that, who we're going to end up playing, whether it's AC Milan or Roma. I don't believe we've ever played either of those teams uh, in any um, uh, major competitions in the past. So let's just recap on Leverkusen. You know, uh, they play at the Bay Arena, uh, 30,000 capacity stadium. Uh, they're honours in the past. They've won the German Cup once. They were runners-up in the Champions League back in 2002. They were UEFA Cup winners, which is now the Europa League winners, back in 1988. And their current status is uh, first in the Bundesliga. Uh, of course, we know, managed by Xabi Alonso, you know, as a player, he's got a whole uh, array of uh, honours. World Cup winner, league titles, cup titles, you name it. Their recent form over the last five games, as of now, is that they've won one and drawn one. And that draw was against that 2-2 against Karabag. Now, their current top goal scorer is Victor Bonifaci, a Nigerian international, and he's about to return from injury at the beginning of April. But as, as I've said already, they've got other firepower with Patrick Sheik uh, at the club as well. Now, what about if we do get through? I know it's looking ahead, but why not? AC Milan, uh, we know all about them, don't we? Uh, playing at the San Siro, capacity of over 75,000. Uh, they've been champions of Italy 19 times, Italian Cup winners five times, European Cup winners or Champions League winners seven times, Cup winner, Cup winners twice, and they're currently second in the Italian League in Serie A. Uh, they're managed by Stefano Pioli, who won the league with them in 2021-22. And their current top goal scorer is someone that's not unfamiliar to us, Olivier Giroud with 14 goals. Their recent form as of now is they've won one, lost one, and drawn one. And Roma, uh, again, a team that we all know an awful lot about, uh, at the Stadio Olimpico, capacity of over 70,000, champions three times in the Italian league, Italian Cup winners nine times, uh, Europa Conference winners, they were the first, weren't they, under uh, Jose Mourinho. Uh, they won that uh, before we won it, uh, um, before we won it. And their current status in uh, Serie A is fifth. They're managed by Daniele De Rossi, one of their ex-players. Um, he was recently appointed. Their recent form is 1-3, lost one and drawn two. And another goal scorer that we know all about is current. Their current top goal scorer is Romelu Lukaku with 18 goals. So it's going to be a tough road uh, to Dublin. Uh, not only do we have to get uh, by... Uh, the top team in the Bundesliga at the moment who are doing exceptionally well. And many pundits, many people are going to put them as favourites against West Ham United. That's fine. I think we're, we'll be happy to be uh, playing as underdogs because uh, um, the pressure's off us. And then if we do get through that, then we're looking at going to Italy for the semi-final. And then who knows? Because if we do get to the semi-final, if we do manage to beat... Um, by Leverkusen, and we do get to the semi-final, it's game. It's an open game, isn't it, then? You know, anything can happen in a semi-final of a cup competition. All to look forward to. But of course, first of all, we've got Aston Villa on Sunday. We've got to get past them. Uh, and we've got to focus on the Premier League now for the next couple of weeks uh, until we get that game in by Leverkusen on the 11th of April. Looking forward to it. And uh, I'll see you all very soon.